Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to affirm today's resolution that countries should prioritize the visa applications of migrants from cultures similar to their own. First, we'd like to define culture, which is, you know, a consideration of the way of life, including economic, political, and social interests. We'd then like to offer a conflict that exists in the world today. Certain nations, as we all know, having debated many topics based on migrations, have more pull factors than others. This means these nations are going to have massive influxes and still do have massive influxes of migrants, and countries deserve to have a normalization and regulation of their borders. So when this conflict exists, we have situations where people must be chosen between other people because you can't allow everyone in. And we argue that a plan must be offered in order to solve these conflict situations. So our plan is that prioritization <coughs> does not necessarily mean that we consider everything we our plan is basically the resolution, but it does not necessarily mean that we consider something before all else. For example, I prioritize homework over friends because I like to think that I'm a pretty good student. And as my partners may or may not attest, I still have some friends. It doesn't mean that I only look to homework in every situation. It's merely that on balance, I'm going to prioritize this uh, homework. So let's look to the actual plan. In situations of general equality, countries should be prioritizing the visa applications of migrants from cultures similar to their own. And this does not mean that other factors are completely irrelevant. For example, refugees are going to be treated in different situations because clearly the factors are different. 
So what we're looking to is prioritizations in certain cases in order to help normalize and regulate the flow of immigrants into, or the flow of migrants into and out of nations. So let's look to the advantages of this plan. The first advantage is that, when tension, that tensions usually tend to arise when integration is too quick. And although integration is a good thing, we're arguing integration is a good thing, we must unfortunately consider the potentiality of backlash, which has empirically happened. Backlash, for example, in the US, happened when the Chinese, you know, convinced that the gold rush was a very beneficial thing, could help them, <laughs> came into the US. Now, there was a massive migration movement from China into the US. And through the natural fault of basic humanity, there was a natural backlash between the US, the US natives and the Chinese, not the US natives, because you know, they immigrated, but you know, the people already in the US and the Chinese coming in. And this backlash basically violated tons of the rights of the Chinese, and we're saying that the only way to protect this is to normalize the flow. We still wanted the Chinese there, but we didn't want the natural perception of the people inside the United States already to become so negative, to cause so many harms. We also don't want to affirm what Merkel said, which is that multiculturalism has failed. The only reason these statements are being said is because there is an unregulated flow, whereas if we have that mentality, no one's going to move anywhere. Instead, we must try to prevent this and maybe allow for people to move, but just not in such massive quantities that certain misconceptions arise. Let's move on to the second advantage. <coughs> Our second advantage is basically that political stability is the only thing that uh, is a necessary thing to have in society. Political stability, however, can exist if certain nations are allowing many people who have, because of certain pull factors, have no experience in that field. For example, a democratic nation, we don't want necessarily to allow tons of people who have no experience with the democratic system to come in. Because one, they might be uninformed about the actual politics and how it works, and two, they might reject the system. We want to have some political you know, stability. This is not to say that we are rejecting everyone. Again, we are prioritizing the visa applications. We're not denying them visa applications. We're not even denying them you know, the right to have visas in, uh, in general. What we're doing is prioritizing in most instances to help have net benefits. So let's look into how exactly we're evaluating the round. We're saying that in a world where there is prioritization, you must have the net, you will have net benefits over a world in which there isn't prioritization. We are again not saying that you should not have any migrant from a different you know, culture not coming into the country, but merely that the prioritization exists only to provide benefits throughout the entire nation as well as to society. So let's move on to another subpoint of that benefit. Basically, the tensions that arise between you know, political systems also affect it in sort of economic ways. Because skilled workers in certain cultures are gonna have more relevant skills in terms of application to the actual culture itself. For example, you know, the medicinal practices of certain nations are more similar than other nations. We're going to want to at least allow for this benefit in an economic sense for skilled workers to have the ability to at least you know, be able to work with the fields that they're operating in. If you come to the US and you're from Europe, you're probably gonna have a more similar medical understanding or a more similar medical practice that will be more well accepted by the people who might want your practices. We don't want a ton of people coming in, not having any jobs, and then forcing the country, the host country, to have to pay for something which because they couldn't get jobs, such as social welfare, social security, social benefits in that situation. So we don't want to put an undue burden on the country, and we also want to help advance the benefits of all others. But again, this is still prioritization. Because those other medicinal practices do exist, we do want them to come in. We do want the integration of these people, but at such a high rate in which there might be job losses, that's a bad thing. Instead, the prioritization will only happen when we see that there are way too many people of this medicinal field with no jobs. So we're going to make it easier for them and tell them pretty much they won't get a job. So if we're not going to prioritize them and give them the application immediately, but again, they might get it in the future. For all these reasons, we urge you to affirm. Thank you. for a speech and a few questions from our negative side. Sure. The first question, what do you want to achieve by our plan? Well, basically our advantages. We want to achieve a normalized flow of migrants throughout the world in order to help ease tensions and you know, basic economic and political benefits because of it. So what is the problem with the tensions right now? Why do ten tensions occur now in our society? Well, for example, once you have pull factors of only certain nations, there's an influx of a migrant community that is oftentimes percepted by the people already in the country to be a bad thing. 
You know, for example, people naturally, in many cases, have a tendency to have xenophobia. The only way to rid ourselves of the xenophobia is to, in fact, have prioritization, is to, in fact, mm -hmm. make it clear that these are not bad people just because they're coming in in a massive sir, number. So you, so you agree with the fact that stereotypes and xenophobia actually cause these tensions? We're saying society. that the, they are exacerbated when you allow an influx, and you must normalize it in order to rid the world of this xenophobia. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Another question, what is your criteria for culture? How are you going to define which culture well, a lot is? Well, a lot of the culture that is defined in the world today, for example, in the EU, is based upon agreements. There's you know, basic easy flow because the EU has pretty much agreed, hey, we're all sort of similar, let's allow. Uh, clearly, there are other factors involved, but that's where culture sometimes Thank stems you, from, from agreements. Is culture something objective? Can you define, in, is, culture, is culture always objective? Well, culture isn't necessarily objective, but legislation in terms of this resolution can, in fact, be made based on the premise of culture. Legislators can, in fact, think, hey, culturally, we are very distinct from this nation. They don't necessarily need to have a quantization of that culture. They can just think it when they're making this legislation. What is similar culture? How do you define similar culture? Well, similar culture will have similar political, economic, and social interests. Can you please elaborate? Well, it depends on case to case, but you know, if people love capitalism, that's similar to another country who loves capitalism. People love communism, similar to another country that loves communism. Those Thank are you, similar com uh, so economic. So, why are saying that uh, that people who have d similar culture do not have uh, tensions? So, why do we have tensions right now, even in the native, even native people? Between native people, you're saying? Yes. Well, we're not saying we solve for that. That's a completely different situation. Yes, but do you agree with the fact that even if people have similar culture, actually the, the same culture, they still have uh, We're tensions. saying we mitigate tensions in a different scheme. Like, okay. that's a different problem that we're not saying we okay. solve for, Thank but you. then it doesn't matter. Yeah, and you told us again that they probably will reject the system because they don't know. How well, do they you have them, here. Well, okay. How do you respond to the fact that was their active choice to come to the country in the first place? No, and we're they saying natives wilderness. will reject. Okay, so once you apply for a visa, once you want to be a migrant, you're not in the country yet. You get to the country, and then you have to live there because you know you just got residency. That's where we're saying <laughs> these people, because they just got there in such large numbers, the natives or you know people already there are going to have a backlash after that because migrants are not going to be fully aware of the backlash because they haven't been there yet. It's only when they get there that backlash even starts to arise. Thank you.
theme of position stands for diversity and equality in our society. And we see that the major flaw of team proposition was that they haven't uh, uh, understood that uh, there is no, def uh, no, uh, no definition of the culture and that the culture varies, ladies and gentlemen. The, the fact is that uh, in one co uh, we, of, because of the globalization, in one country there are a lot of, lots of different cultures, lots of people with different attitudes. And, uh, and uh, the fact that, uh, uh, that uh, that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, is, uh, is not a tr true lady. Uh, talking about uh, the fact about the prioritization, ladies and gentlemen, we see that when we prioritize something, we, c we create an equality in our society, ladies and gentlemen. We see that prioritizing one culture, uh, culture against other would co uh, is morally unfair because, ladies and gentlemen, the people cannot choose where born, uh, where he can born, and uh, but he have an active choice. Uh, he didn't have an active choice to choose where to born, but as he had a p uh, has a right to pursue of happiness, he can uh, he is able to choose where to live and into what country he can uh, he uh, where to go. So we see that uh, the countries would act hypocritical, uh, undermining uh, values that they uh, stand for uh, as equality for everyone and pursuit of happiness when they allow and prioritize one a person, uh, one people against the other. Uh, we see that, uh, 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 we see that, talking about the tensions, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, uh, the different uh, tensions is caused not only because of the different cultures, ladies and gentlemen. Tensions, uh, talking about tensions between citizens and migrants, ladies and gentlemen, is firstly to cause because migrants steal jobs from, uh, uh, because of the economic reasons, because migrants steal jobs from native workers as they're uh, willing to work for less than the, mem uh, for uh, less than the native war wants to work. And uh, also, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have tensions between similar countries in our society, as for example, in Yugoslavia, uh, after, uh, uh, because uh, from the Yugoslavia, the uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina or the Serbian people, they, they have tensions between each other, even if their culture is very, very, very similar, ladies and gentlemen. And, the, and, and also, we see we have that uh, even uh, in uh, another case, we have that two different cult uh, cultures, for example, like uh, uh, have the same uh, uh, historical uh, background as colonial past, and they do not have tensions here, ladies and gentlemen. For example, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, African uh, countries with uh, Europe countries that had uh, that were colonies uh, in the in the past, and we see that it's uh, unfair uh, to say that only because of the different cultures, ladies and gentlemen, they have tensions because that's actually not a problem here. And we have, and thirdly, we have a globalization that actually mixes uh, cultures. And in one country, we have uh, different attitudes, different religions, different political views, but we still uh, can uh, have uh, have uh, the, uh, have uh, peace as for example what the, the example like Chinese people in the USA ladies and gentlemen Asian people are all over the world and we accept them equally because <laughs> that's not so uh, that's actually not a, a problem for uh, everyone. So talking about the political stability ladies and gentlemen firstly we see that those people, uh, 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 as they uh, uh, as they uh, 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 migrate legally, they choose where to go, and they choose the culture in one they want to live. And we see that there is uh, no uh, there that there will be no harms uh, for the uh, for the political stability, as those uh, p persons accept the culture that they're going to. So, and their uh, argument about um, about the uh, job and medical practices that they gave an example about medical practices that we, uh, because of the cultural difference there will be uh, no jobs for those migrants is absolutely assumption, ladies and gentlemen. Because in Europe, in USA, we practice uh, uh, the, the different kind of medicine, uh, the medicine from the uh, China and the medicine from the Europe, and we still have those words because there are different needs of the people and. Uh, uh, different kinds of uh, people who uh, want uh, different things, ladies and gentlemen. 
and we see only the harms of their uh, of this prioritization, ladies and gentlemen. Because firstly, the government sent the message to this uh, to the firstly that they uh, do not accept other cultures, and uh, the uh, uh, this will increase tensions uh, and, uh, between uh, those different cultures. Second, uh, secondly, uh, we we see that government will send message that even uh, if we, we do not want other uh, people who are living uh, actually from different countries in our uh, in our country right now because uh, we n want uh, the similar cultures ladies and gentlemen and we see long-term uh, uh, harms, ladies and gentlemen. As for example, they, they were talking about, uh, they agreed on cross-examination that uh, tensions uh, and stereotypes uh, need to be changed. And we see that without, uh, uh, without giving a chance for, uh, uh, for country citizens to understand the other culture, there will be no integration and, no, uh, no st uh, and, no, uh, and there will be no changes of the stereotypes, ladies and gentlemen. So for all the reasons uh, I, uh, I, I told, told you today and for equality and diversity in this society, I beg you to oppose. I will run that. thanking you for your speech. So I just have a couple of questions. So let's say that um, a country is going through you know, visa applications, right? They have two visas of identical applicants. One of these people, one of these visas, one of these applicants, uh, comes from a country that has a very different culture from the country that they're trying to get into. One comes from a country that has very similar culture. Which visa should they accept? Um, we believe that there should be equality in both visas. Okay, well let's say that they only have a limited number of visas, right? Because this is the way it is in the real world. Most countries can't give out unlimited visas, correct? Yes. Okay, so these are their last two. This, they can only give one more visa. Which person do they give it to? So actually for the one that they agree uh, or more and the, the, for the, that person that has better need to go to that country. Okay, they have equal need. Let's say they're both unskilled. <laughs> Let's say they're identical, okay? Just hypothetically. They're both unskilled laborers, 35, men, unmarried, make the same amount of money a year, whatever, right? They both want to come into the country. One is coming from a country with a very different culture. One is coming from a country with a similar culture. Which one do we take? It doesn't matter. Really, because the uh, people is equal uh, in our society, and we should treat them equally. So it doesn't matter if we accept different culture or the same culture, because so if they uh, if they uh, choose to come to that country, they prove that they want to integrate in that society. Thank you. So in the negative world, we choose arbitrarily. We flip a coin. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, then I'm also wondering uh, if you can just tell me. Uh, a little bit about this argument you have about uh, migrant workers. You talk about how, sorry, you would say that migrants take jobs away from the people in that country, right? Um, 
Yes. Okay. Can you clarify what this has to do with negating the resolution? Why does uh, it no, the, the fact that you said that tensions only is caused because of the different cultures is is actually not true because if there are tensions between citizens and uh, migrant workers, it's usually because of economic reasons as the migrants are usually uh, uh, willing to work for minimum wages while, while uh, citizens are not. Okay, um, so are, would you say that there are currently any like major culture clashes happening in the world between, let's say, migrants from a very different culture in a society that has you know, a different culture? Are there any current culture clashes you can think of between two very different cultures? Uh, in, our in our world, there are culture clashes between similar countries and the same right. culture clashes between I, different countries. Okay, um, okay, so there are culture clashes occurring between different countries, between, let's say, migrants from countries with very very different. But at the same time, yes, but at the okay. same time, okay. there just, just clarify. Okay. Um, so essentially, I just want to also clarify, in the affirmative world, when we prioritize something, right, that means that, for example, if there are two equal people with equal, equal applications and we choose the one, sorry.
right. Thank you to our opponents for their speech, and thank you to the judges for watching this round. When evaluating today's motion, there are three major questions that we need to ask ourselves. The first one is, what exactly is the conflict that is posited in the motion? Obviously, the affirmative team has talked about how governments have to control their borders and not everyone can come in. So that brings us to our second question, which is, how does the plan resolve this conflict? What exactly is the affirmative advocating and what exactly does that look like in the real world? Then the third question we need to answer is, what effects does this plan have upon diversity? Does affirming automatically mean that we lose diversity in all of these countries? And then the fourth and last question we need to answer is, what exactly happens to te cultural tensions that arise between two different cultures when we affirm or negate the resolution? So now let's answer the first question. During cross-examination, the negative team concedes that in the negative world, we would just be flipping a coin to resolve conflicts. The problem is that is never how governments should determine immigration policy. This means that if the affirmative plan can demonstrate that there's any sort of risk of a benefit coming out of the affirmative case, that is a proactive reason for you not to flip a coin, but rather to actually think about the decisions that you're making when you're accepting who comes into your country. So remember that we very clearly define for you that culture is a combination of political, economic, and social factors. They bring up in their case that you know culture isn't very easy to define, and I absolutely agree. However, we've already demonstrated to you that in the real world, it is very possible for us to sometimes come to a general consensus about similar cultures. For example, we can see that countries in the EU are probably more similar than, let's say, one country in the EU and one country in Asia. So even if we can't 100% define it, does not mean that the plan is impossible. So now let's go and answer the second question, which is about the plan. So remember, we've already posited that there's some sort of conflict. Governments can't accept every single immigrant that comes to their country. We obviously see this in the real world, and we've been debating about this for the past couple of days. So the affirmative plan it goes unresponded to. The plan is that all else equal, we should be looking at culture. So this means that when we prioritize culture, it doesn't mean that we reject people of other cultures. It doesn't mean that we ignore other factors. But rather, when we are looking at uh, people, we're looking at visa applications of similar people, it is not unreasonable for the government to say that we should prioritize people of similar cultures as long as we're giving you a proactive benefit of doing so, which comes out of the affirmative case. So now let's answer the third question, which is what exactly does this have an effect, uh, what effect does it have upon diversity? Now let's go to the negative case. The negative case talks about how people don't choose where they're born, so they shouldn't be rejected. But in the negative world, the, it, they're painting an ideal picture in which we can just have everybody. The problem is that just isn't true. So we know that we have a conflict. How are we going to make sure that we still have diversity? Their argument is that we still have tensions between people of similar cultures. But our argument is that we aren't going to solve for those tensions, but neither will they. The real question is, how can we decrease tensions? So as long as the affirmative can demonstrate that we have a comparative benefit, then that is a reason to affirm. So there's no reason why we can't have diversity in the affirmative world. Remember, we can still accept people of other cultures. The only thing that the plan really talks about is what happens when we have conflicts of rights and we can only choose one culture over another. So for example, countries like the US or other Western European countries, uh, so for example, the US prioritizes certain visa applications over others. But look at the US. It doesn't mean that we reject diversity. It doesn't mean that we don't have anybody of other cultures. It simply means that at the end of the day, all other factors equal, we can choose the one who we think will help our society more. So that brings us to the last issue, which is cultural tensions. Go to the affirmative case. We very clearly give you an argument about backlash. Remember, we love diversity too. Don't get us wrong. We're from the US. We're from New York City, right? We love different cultures. But the problem is that we need to make sure that these people can integrate themselves at a reasonable pace so that we don't incur this backlash. For example, just yesterday, there was a terrorist attack committed in Norway against, uh, there was a terrorist attack committed in Norway, and the reasoning behind it was that there was this anti-Muslim sentiment because of the recent influx of Muslim immigrants. The problem is that when we see these huge influx of people who are not of the same culture, that ultimately ends up hurting those people. We also gave the example of the gold rush in the US when, uh, when many Chinese people immigrated to California in search of gold. The problem was partially economic, we agree, but it was also partially cultural. To say that the only reason that the US reacted was because they wanted, uh, because of the economic competition is false. It was very clearly also a cultural thing. Also, for example, they bring up the example of North Africa and European countries. I think that's actually
an example that goes towards the affirmative side because we demonstrate to then the real world the influx of northern African immigrants to Europe has caused this backlash. So it is reasonable for the government to prefer people of similar cultures because our first argument, which generally goes unresponded to, which is that they generally are going to have a better time integrating themselves, which means that we want it at a more regional pace, which is what the affirmative plan gives them. That's the support plan. stands for equality. Sure. Equality wouldn't we can give, right? It's like equal opportunity. But at the end of the day, if we have to pick between two people, there needs to be a way to resolve that conflict. So is it fair to choose uh, the one that is, has an, uh, the similar culture in order? That's what the motion is. So yes, we are saying it's fair. So actually, you're standing for uh, inequality? No, okay, the problem is, this is the first major issue that I bring up in my speech, right? The problem is that the negative is ignoring the key conflict in the resolution, right? You are pretending that we can just have culture and equality and everyone's really happy, right? The problem is that there's no country in which that actually occurs, that they can just give out visas to all the different co like countries in the world and everybody who wants to come in can come in. There isn't a single country that has that opportunity, right? Only the affirmative is actually answering the question of what happens when we have similar visa applications but of different cultures. So how do the countries choose right now uh, who to uh, let into the country and who not? Uh, different countries have different policies, right? If you specify a country, oh, depending example, on how familiar States I am. Okay, so in the United States, in terms of visa applications, for some people it's easier to get a visa. For other countries, uh, that's like, like the U.S. has more restrictions. You have to jump through more loopholes. Right, so there are, there are different standards for different people. So uh, that doesn't mean that we hate diversity, right? Like I know a lot of different people from so, like different cultures, and I live in the West. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So if you're allowing someone from similar country uh, to enter you, uh, to, to your country while uh, do, uh, while you do not prioritize uh, from a different culture, is uh, what what if uh, that uh, people from different country is in need to go to your country because of the repressive regime or uh, bad economic situation? Okay, that's exactly what we clarify in the plan, right? We clarify that in the first and second speeches. Affirming the motion does not mean that we are going to turn away, let's say, like refugees, right? Oh, you're not of the same culture. We don't want you, right? That's not what the affirmative is defending. We are saying that all other things similar, right, to prioritize just means that if that is the factor that you're looking at, it is okay to say that we prefer someone of a similar culture. That does not mean that we ignore other factors. The example is I prioritize homework over friends. That doesn't mean that I don't have any friends, I hate people, and I never go outside. That just means that generally, if there's a conflict, and generally if all other things are similar, sometimes, more often than not, I will choose my home. Right? So that's not an absolute statement. So what will be the, the proportion between choosing the, the similar people from similar country and from different country? Uh, I don't know what exactly what you mean by proportion, like do you want percentage, but our argument is generally that if other things are equal, then we are we should choose one from a similar culture, right? You never contest the way the affirmative frames the debate, which is really important because that means the affirmative gets to talk about issues in which other things are similar, culture is the only main difference, right? There's no contestation of the way that we frame the debate in the first name speech. So thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the negative, st st the negative team stands for diversity and equality. And first of all, let me explain you, like, the negative team does not suggest that, you know, that you cannot decline a visa application. We, uh, we still have this, uh, this ability to decline a visa application if we want, don't want to. But what they are suggesting, that if we have similar immigrants, like uh, applying for a visa in, U uh, in France that has a Christian population, and, that, uh, and another uh, Christians, uh, you know, like completely similar people are applying for it, and Muslims are applying for it. And even though the Muslims applied for it first, they would be uh, pushed away, and those Christians, Christians somehow, because they are somehow uh, a similar culture, would be prioritized. And we believe that this creates inequality in our society that we cannot t tolerate. And their whole point that you know that somehow by prioritizing we can control the influxes. Is, is not relevant because you know prioritizing doesn't mean that you know the inf influxes will be uh, diminished somehow, but only only that you know that those uh, you know some people would be left out you know and uh, and a message that uh, would be sent that they are not uh, equal. Okay, and now talking about the point of the cult, uh, culture, you know. They, they said that, you know, we can still agree on a possible consensus, you know, because uh, from, you know, that, you know, that European people are more similar than, uh, than African people. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is not true. Because, for example, you can be born in Africa, but, you know, you can still know the, uh, the same uh, language, for example, English as, uh, as, in, uh, as in those countries. So you can have a cultural similarities. And we believe that only because you are born in Africa and you are somehow stereotyped that you are somehow different doesn't mean that you should be uh, prioritized over another person. And we believe that a, a culture is a thing that differs. And we see that if, if, you, if you know, for example, have a, some kind of a stereotype that, uh, that Muslim people are somehow, uh, you know, uh, more conservative, Though the culture can be, uh, you know, can, can differ because what we see from the uh, Arab Spring, how uh, uh, you know Arabs were considered to be conservative, and how they actually pushed liberal ideas, you know, that that are more of a, a culture of, of the Western uh, Western world. Uh, so what we see that the culture can actually differ, and what we see that uh, from the point of you know this integration, what we believe that integration won't happen because we see that inequality is created. First of all, inequality is created because we see that those people that are currently that were currently living in the country, you know, that were uh, that were living uh, in the country before the policy was um, uh, um, before the the policy would be created, you know, they would get a message that the government does not does not uh, you know. Uh, um, does not agree with their culture and somehow that they're uh, putting them to a different section and telling those people that were living in that country that they are somehow different and they're not equal in the society. Okay, and then like, we, we create inequality because there are some people that are in, uh, in need of a visa. Like for example, you have a business trip tomorrow, uh, tomorrow uh, from, uh, from, you know, uh, from a European country to, uh, to uh, uh, to Saudi Arabia, and you would, be, even though you applied for the uh, visa first, you would be rejected only because you are from a dif different culture. And we believe that it's not the, the case where we can create some kind of equality. Uh, and what we believe that when people choose to integrate to a country, they already uh, they make an active choice. And what we believe that they already show uh, um, some kind of. Um, Willingness to cooperate with the, with the government and to, to follow, uh, to you know, uh, to follow its uh, its culture because they uh, those people are not choose where they are born. They have the pursuit of happiness, and we believe that where the, when they are pursuing that happiness, they ha should have the right to equality to uh, to be uh, to be in that country uh, to be in that country. Uh, and what we believe that even though if you have similar similar cultures, that does not mean that we have that we automatically have equality in our uh, equality and no tensions in our society. And we gave the example of, for example, uh, Yugoslavia, uh, Yugoslavian nations that uh, where you know that have some kind of a similar uh, uh, similar uh, traditions and similar culture. But you know we saw tensions, you know, between those countries. We saw wars and we. Do not believe that automatically when you have some kind of similar culture 
that doesn't ma automatically mean that you will solve those tensions that occur in our society. So for all these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to oppose. Thank you. Speech. Have a couple questions. Yeah, of course. Okay. So first of all, you say that uh, you know people from Africa can actually have a similar culture when they're coming into you know a different country. Like they can speak English, they can have culture, right? That's what you're saying. Like we see that we cannot stereotype people. You know that okay, if, okay. if you are from Africa, that you have completely different culture and di completely different culture values, can be similar, only because right? you are from Africa. Right. But from any given country, sometimes. You're not following the norm. That culture, you can have a very similar culture, and that's a benefit to let those people in because they do, in fact, have a similar culture, right? Well, we don't see benefit because when we told you examples okay. that even though if you have right. similar culture, that's not automatically mean that you will uh, right. cooperate okay, so let's talk better. About that. Let's talk about that. Are you saying that it is equal in terms of the conflict that might happen between people of the exact same culture and people of different cultures? Excuse me, can you are you saying that it's exactly equivalent between cultures that are the same and cultures that are distinct, the tensions that can arise? Or are you saying that it just isn't automatic? You don't automatically re resolve tension? Well, we, do, uh, like we don't say that tensions automatically occur, but you know that we, we say right. that tensions can happen right. Right. even they though we have happen. similar... But are you arguing that the tensions between cultures of the, sim of the same exact culture are going to most of the time be exactly equal to those of different cultures? Like, there are no, no countries that, you know, have completely, right. si uh, completely okay. similar right. cultures. Okay, and cool. There are no, like, okay. there are no yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about diversity. You're saying that diversity is going to be hindered. Why? Excuse me, can you... Allow You're saying that diversity won't exist, right, in a situation. So we're saying there's an influx of some sort of, you know, like, type of culture that's coming into the U.S. Yeah. As an example. Yeah. Why but, can't diversity exist? Okay, but you see that your policy does not solve the influx because what we see that we okay. al we can already control okay. the influx by rejecting So the influx of certain but, cultures is what you're talking about. But we don't solve for that? Or you're saying we don't solve for just migrants coming in? Excuse me? Are you saying we don't solve for migrants coming into the country or we don't solve for migrants of a certain very like, you know, possibly, you know, you know tension causing culture coming into the uh, certain country? Which one are you talking about? All migrants or just certain migrants? I'm just unclear what, what you're advocating here. Like, Immigrants that all, all right, know, so the point that we are having immigrants that they are from like countries that are okay. completely similar uh, si similar cultures. They there are countries people that have okay. Know, so there will be tensions if similar cultures come in as well. Is what you're saying, right? Yes, we believe okay. that that so how can does the negative, that, uh, uh, How does the negative world solve for that? What do you me? do to stop the culture com the similar cultures having conflicts? Excuse me. Well, how do you solve that problem? Cultures are coming in with the same culture, right? And, yes. And they are still conflicts. How do you solve for that? Well, we do not need to solve the problem because... You then know, why, why should we negate? That exists, right? Excuse me? Why do we need mm -hmm. to negate? Well, because your plan does not, you know, does not benefit so the all you're saying is there but only creates a bigger, in, bigger inequality. All right, cool. Thank you.
Is everybody ready? So um, first off, I'd like to thank our opponents for uh, engaging in this debate with us, and I would also like to thank our judges for sitting here and listening to us. So um, there's a couple main issues that I want to touch uh, in this round. So first, I would like to get up here, and as our opponents last said, I too stand for diversity and equality. And I will go on to explain to you exactly how diversity and equality still exist in the affirmative world. Then I'm going to talk about the conflict in question. Then I'm going to talk about culture. What is culture? How do you define it? Third, I'm going to talk about how our plan resolves this conflict. I'm going to go on to talk about what affirming does for diversity, as I mentioned before, and equality. And then secondly, what our plan does for cultural tensions. Does it bring down these cultural tensions? Do these cultural tensions exist? Is it worth attempting to bring down these cultural tensions? OK, so let's start with the first issue, which is what is the conflict in the motion? So we're talking about this situation in which it is necessary to flip a coin, right? We know that these countries haven't, don't have an unlimited number of visas. They have to choose at some point between applicants. And we are saying that in the situation where the applicants are identical in nearly every way, when all else is equal, we prioritize similar cultures rather than different mm -hmm. cultures. So in his last speech, uh, our opponent got up and talked about what if a Muslim applies first? Are you going to prioritize a Christian? No, we're not. We're looking at situations in which these people applied at the same time, have similar applications, and we have to choose. In the negative world, you flip a coin. In the affirmative world, you make a choice that, as we're going to show you, is very likely will have some net benefit. Now let's move on to the second argument. The second argument in this round is about culture. What is culture? How do we define, define culture? They argue that culture is not easily uh, able to be defined. First off, there are obvious trends in culture. We give you the example of the EU, right? The EU joined together because they recognized that they had similar culture. We define culture as including economic, social, and political ideals that are generally shared. Secondly, he talks about these individuals. What about you know the one individual in South Africa who can speak perfect English? I would say that culture includes more than language. And secondly, I would say that uh, th these individuals are not necessarily what we're taking into account, right? We're looking at the culture as a whole. This brings me to my third argument about culture. Even if our system is not 100% accurate and that one individual slides through, if we can prove to you that we are providing some net benefit, that we are solving this problem in some small way, then we should win this round. Because in CrossX, our opponent conceded that there are no negative things coming out of the affirmative plan. In cross-examination, ladies and gentlemen, this is very important. The opponent, our opponents conceded that there is no disadvantage to our plan, only that we don't know if it will work and how much it will work. So at the point that I can show you that it is working even a little bit to decrease these cultural tensions, etc., the affirmative must win this round. Now let's look to the next issue. The next issue is how our plan resolves this conflict. So let's talk about diversity, right? I stood up here and I said that I love diversity. I'm from New York City. As my opponent mentioned, we love diversity. In the affirmative world, you are still getting this diversity. In cross-examination, our opponents were unable to answer the question about why diversity does not exist in the affirmative world. We still have immigrants coming into the country. Just because the, we may be you know, prioritizing someone with a similar culture in these few instances in which all else is equal does not mean that we're all of a sudden going to have a completely homogeneous uh, population. This argument has not been contested by the opposition. And this is a very important point, ladies and gentlemen, because it shows you that all their arguments about how diversity is important are true, but exist in the affirmative world as well. So if you want to vote for diversity, you can vote for the affirmative. And if you want to decrease t cultural tensions, you also vote for the affirmative. So let's talk about that. The next argument, as I mentioned before, is cultural tensions. Now. Our uh, opposition concedes that cultural tensions do exist in the world. Their only argument against the fact that cultural tensions exist is that non-cultural tensions exist as well. And we agree with this. However, first we would say that it's not the affirmative's burden to solve issues between citizens of similar cultures, right? What we're debating right now is whether or not we let these immigrants in that are from different cultures, OK? Secondly, I would say that. Um, we want them to integrate slowly, and we've showed you all these examples of how there are cultural tensions in the real world, and they do not address these examples. So at the point that we're showing you that this normalization of integration, this slightly, slightly reduced uh, influx of immigrants, we give you multiple examples, is the way to go, you really are forced to affirm. So because the affirmative world tells you that in the situation where we're forced to flip a coin, we're providing you with the possibility of some net benefit, and because we're showing you that it's very likely that this benefit will actually occur, and because the negative has not showed you any harms in affirming, but rather just told you that he's not sure it will work completely, this is the main reason to affirm this resolution today. 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I urge you to please. that no one in this room would deny the fact that our world is getting smaller. I believe that no one would deny the fact that globalization has affected every single one of us. And I think that no one will deny that cultural now is a, a thing we cannot uh, clearly define what it is. So ladies and gentlemen, to prove you that we actually, we actually, pro we want to prove you that actually cultural, cultural prioritization is not the best thing to do so, we have to answer two simple questions. The first question we have to answer is the question, is prioritization a good thing in the first place? And secondly, uh, will it will create better integration society? But first of all, we would like to, we would like to again, uh, uh, we would like to again emphasize the thing that they have never truly told us about the cultural thing and how they actually say. The only thing that they told us about cultural definition that they're going to be similar. Ladies and gentlemen, what we told you about culture is a thing that actually changes. And my second speaker, Justinas, told you about how a, a, an example of Arabic Spring, how stereotypes about Arabics, Arabic countries that are conservative, have actually changed when they actually have liberal ideas. And we said that the culture is the thing that actually is like morality that has conception is changing, so we see that it's a big flaw from team proposition. So first of all, going to this first point, is prioritization a good thing in the first place? First of all, what we stand today on team negatively, we will not tolerate inequality, first of all. We see that this prioritization is actually creating inequality, because we, because what the, what team, what team, uh, uh, team affirmative told us, if, if a Muslim and a Christian will uh, will uh, accept, will apply for visa, they choose them, uh, and if a Muslim ap applies first, they're going to choose Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not prioritization, first of all, we see, and this is a flaw, that, and we see, we see that prioritization actually, we actually is an equality, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be even worse, because we actually step on our fundamental rights to, we, uh, what we have equality, and we, we against you. We actually have. We actually infringe on our fundamental rights when we say we are actually pursuit of pursuit of happiness. When we say, ladies and gentlemen, that the only thing, the only, the only thing that they have better those those similar cultures, they actually have birth lottery. And we said birth lottery just depends on birth lottery is actually unjust and incorrect because we see that there is no active choice because we cannot choose where are we born and which culture we are affected when we are growing up. So ladies and gentlemen, because we will not tolerate inequality and bad decisions, 
We say it is absolutely not true, and we say that prioritization is a bad thing. Also, what we told you about the, the concept of cultural and change, and we told you about examples of Arabic Spring, when we told you that actually cultures change, and it is not correct to say, and we told you again, later that even when we told you about the same cultures, we told you that actually, we, we, why we told you, is we told you that even though they, because what they said that same same uh, we told you that same same cultural nations can actually have conflicts within themselves that does not mean that culture is the thing that creates tensions in society ladies and gentlemen and that is why we say that the, we say that it is incorrect also what we see as a very harmful frame from the moral side is the message that the government sends it actually sends and this is the point about diversity ladies and gentlemen because we actually affect diversity because we show that society that we do not want these immigrants and that is a, a sign we actually send to society that we don't want different racial things and another message is actually that we do not want uh, do what migrants are, are in the country right now to live and we see that is unfair and unmoral so going on the second flash flash point is it going to have better integration first of all what we, what we told you from our first speech ladies and gentlemen we told you about the active choice they give we see that legal migrants chose to 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 immigrate legally that means that they chose the country that means that they want to integrate in the society this is their active choice, ladies and gentlemen. And this is why we say that they are willing to cooperate with the country. They are willing to accept their, uh, their culture. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, cultural, uh, we say that cultural difference is not the base, not a basic thing for visa application. And what we see that actually tensions right now are created because, the, because during the cross-examination, they accepted the fact that tensions right now actually are raised from uh, stereotypes, ladies and gentlemen, how are we gonna how are we gonna stop stereotypes if we show the government and the message that they send that we do not want different people in our society? How is that gonna change the situation, ladies and gentlemen? A point never responded by team up by team affirmative. And when we told you that actually there are other reasons why why there are uh, why there are tension, we told you about economic reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, this is actually true that there are not only cultural differences cause tensions. And ladies and gentlemen, we will not tolerate inequality in our society and we will not tolerate diversity. We beg to oppose this motion.